Well, opinion from the Haaretz news magazine, which basically is a liberal leftist uh, uh, publication coming from out of Israel. And of course, they are against a lot of the right position. And I want you to notice how this article starts, which is an indication how you could tell when something is completely biased. The rise of the far-right extremist who could sit in Netanyahu's government is a real and present danger to Israeli democracy and the lives of both Jews and Palestinians. So why is the American Jewish community not speaking out? Well, first of all, they have. They've spoken out by President Biden, who's basically of the same mindset as Haaretz, leftist mindset. And notice how they term extremists, anyone from the right. This is very important. Just like Mr. Aguirre from Channel 10 News locally here in, in Florida calling those who supported or support this gentleman, um, what's his name here? The um, Itamar as being a, a hate a hate monger. As a right-wing government reliant on an extremist party, that's how they biasly call this government right-wing an extremist party, not like it, the left doesn't have their own extremist views. Um, President Number C prepares to take power in Israel. Too many of the leaders of the mainstream American Jewish organizations have been noticeably silent on the real and present danger to Israeli democracy and the lives both of Jews and Palestinians. The Jewish Federation of North America issued a statement declaring, now keep in mind, the Jewish Federation in almost any state you'll find is always full of leftist-leaning Jews and leaders. I haven't yet found one, maybe one, yeah, maybe one moderate uh, lending Jewish leader in the Jewish Federation. Almost every single one in the Jewish Federation leans to the left. And those who do not basically remain silent, so not to upset the majority of the leftist leaders in those groups. The Jewish Federation of North America issued a statement declaring that they respect and salute Israel's vibrant democratic process and look forward to working with the government to support Jews around the world and strengthen the relationship between Israel, the North American Jewish community, and our government leaders. Very well stated. William Daroff, the CEO of the Conference of Presidents of Major Jewish Organization, told a TV reporter that he was celebrating Israeli democracy. Why? Because the right won. And notice that they don't call, the Jewish Federation does not call uh, those who won as extremists. And I applaud the Jewish Federation for that especially in this uh, culture in which anything that smells to the right is declared and labeled extremist or with hatred. Israeli addition, the fact that so many people voted shows that Israelis are voting with their feet and with their ballots to say, I believe in the system and I want to be part of it, Daroff tells Mike Wagenheim. The American Jewish community simply praises Israel's vibrant democracy. Though vague qualifiers at the past statements of some potential members of the governing coalition raise serious concerns about issues we prioritize. Now, there have been some glimmers of hope amidst the lack of response. Reform movement called out the extremists by name. See, this is what is the issue here. The reformist conservative movement declaring those to the right as extremists. They're not extremists, they're conservative. The conservative movement declined to commit to working with the future government. And the members of the Progressive Israel uh, Network, of which Teruah, the organization I lead as a member, includes Street, New York Israel Fund, Reconstructing Judaism, and American for Peace Now, have been strong in their denunciation. Very similar to what happened. Now, I said earlier that we're going to find ourselves as the left gains strength, having to combat anti-Semitism directly as a result of the leftist extremists. But the majority of the mainstream organizations are not going far enough to condemn the new governing coalition 
of anti-democratic value. First of all, it's not anti-democratic. A commitment to permanent occupation is embrace of racism. It does not embrace racism, but that's what they're saying. This is, this is the, the allegations. And this reporting is completely biased. The permanent occupation is an embrace of racism, homophobia, and violence. The silence stands in a sharp contrast to the reaction of American and Jewish leaders to the election of Mayor Kahana. Now, Mayor Kahana uh, was very, very zealous for the Jewish people and Israelis, and his ideologue is that, listen, two people can't get along, we need to separate them. The, ideal, the ideological predecessor of, of today's extremists, notice what they call them, extremists, to the Knesset in 1984. Then 12 mainstream American Jewish organizations declared, we reject this affront to our history, to our tradition and beliefs, and to our abiding commitment to peace and brotherhood. American Jewish organization must not treat the likely new government in Israel as business as usual. You notice how the left is now declaring war on the right in Israel because it elected a right government. This is not simply a matter of political difference or normal right-wing government. Rather, we are seeing the ascendance of a fascist. Here's that word again. Anything to the right is considered fascist. It's an ascendance of fascist party that they openly called for the deportation of Palestinian citizens of Israel. Wait a minute. Either the Palestinians or the Israelis. That promotes bigotry against LGBTQT people, and that calls for violence against Palestinians and Israeli leftists. Now, why doesn't this article mention that the Palestinians, the Muslim Palestinians, are completely against the LGBTQ community? Why doesn't state that? Ah, oh, because they're trying to support the infrastructure of the leftist with being aligned with the Palestinian cause anti-Israel cause. So you see this article is completely biased. And it's biased to the left. In America, Israel will pay a terrible price for right-wing Bagheer victory. Listen, the Israelis voted in him. Just like if right now the Americans vote in uh, Trump. Can we really use the term Jewish supremacy about Israel? Uh, in Israel, you can. U.S. Jewish group faced major dilemma as Israeli far right gains an election poll. Have you ever wondered why are they gaining a movement while here in America the left is the one that's destroying America in every level of government and law? Think about that. It would be no problem to see one day that Israel will reject American Jewry based upon their leftist notion and their anti-Torah views. Netanyahu's election is a win, dealt grievously blow, a grievous blow to Judaism. No, it does not. See, these are statements made out of the hatred from the left. Now, Itamar ben Gavir is the leader of the party, has dozens of indictments for incitement and violence in his past, and has even been convicted of multiple charges until a few years ago. He proudly displayed in his living room the picture of Baruch Goldstein. You know who Bulwark Goldstein is? Is when basically no one was doing anything about what was going on at the kever of, of uh, in, in Hebron. He basically opened gun. He was a doctor. He was a fine medical physician. And what do they call him? The Haaris? A religious extremist who carried out a massacre of Palestinian worshippers in Hebron. They weren't worshippers. They were trying to attack Jews in Hebron. And he got tired of it. You see, this is the same game the leftist plays here in the United States by calling those who are anti-Jewish basically as uh, pro-leftist, pro-Democrat. My friends, we're playing with the game of wars. And clearly, I, I, I understand the issues of Israelis wanting to have safety and security and have Torah value in all of their communities. This is not anything to do with Torah values. Let me say this again. This has nothing to do with Torah values. Just completely more of the West imposition on Israeli culture. And the non-Orthodox Jews should understand 
that they are non-Orthodox, they're non, you could even probably even say non-Jews in all sense of the word because they do not uphold nor embrace Torah value. And it should especially alarm those who celebrate Israel's vibrant democracy. Now, interesting enough, Trump had called on Jews to get their act straight. Israelis had listened to the call. Israelis basically embraced Trump and really appreciated what he did. Interesting enough, the left does not, even the ones in Israel. They want to follow the same procedures and precedents as here in the United States. And of course, one can hardly talk about Israeli democracy without the millions of Palestinians living in the East Jerusalem and west of Palestinians living in the East Jerusalem. And Gaza cannot vote for a government that has the greatest control over their lives uh, because they're not willing to undergo the process of becoming Israeli citizens and negate all types of violence. Keep in mind, many, not all, but many of the Palestinians are still teaching their children how to kill Jews, how to put a bomb on their back, on their, in, in their backpack and blow them up. They are completely a menace to an orderly society. Even they attempted to create their own governance and they could not control themselves because you had other factors and factions coming in creating terrorism from within. So for years, the Teruah Organization of Rabbinic Human Rights or leftist organizations uh, had been sounding the alarm of Itamar ben Gavir. This guy. And this guy's platform is really very, very in the center. Not like they're explaining here. His Otsma Yehudi party and the constellation of violent organizations surrounding them. They call it violence organization because they respond to terrorists that try to do harm. And after Israeli TV station found that Choneinu, the organization that where he long served as a lawyer, has a history of making direct cash payment to Israeli Jews indicted and convicted of terrorism, including Yigal Amir, who assassinated Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabim, who, by the way, people won't say this, but Yitzhak Rabim, uh, there's a whole story uh, that I know of that came out of Cuba that basically many Jews leaving out of Cuba basically went to get to go into Eretz Israel and it was Yitzhak Rabim that on the boat to re- have these new refugees coming from uh, Cuba shot down the, uh, and many were killed on the ship but that's not spoken of a Jew leftist Jew against Jews who were coming from Cuba who happened to be towards the right. We asked the IRS to investigate the Central Fund of Israel. Now, what is this? Who asked that? Again, the rabbinic human rights organization, the leftist organization. You see, here we have the leftist Jew against the Jew to investigate the Jews of the right. You see, there is a conflict here, my friends. We need to wake up to this reality. It's not an issue of Jews. It's an issue of positions that the Jews take. And this position is completely one of of the left and one of the right in which they are battling over the the existence of Torah value. So what did they do? They asked the IRS to investigate Central Fund of Israel, which funnels money to Honeinu. And this effort forced Honeinu, at least publicly, to declare an end to such use of U.S. donations because of what these liberal leftist Jews did. Some will argue that the American Jews should stay quiet about politics in Israel. Now this is said by who? By the leftist group. They want intervention. Some argue that the American Jews should stay quiet about politics. Right now the American Jews are in big, big, deep trouble with their own problems that they themselves have created and cemented here in the States with anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism in this country as at its whole time high. Why? Because of their embrace of leftist view. All I need to do is cite Kanye West, who indicted Jews for their behavior and their conduct so nasty that all they cared about was the money. They didn't care about the human being behind that success. 
And when he spoke up, what did the Jews do? Here on the left, I'll tell you what the Jews do. I'm Jewish. I'm a Jew. And I can tell you what the Jews did on the left. The leftist Jews basically came, came together and created a blockade and completely canceled him out. Of course, I don't agree with the statement with Kanje, but Kanje was speaking out of his hurt and pain of how they treated him in order to get to the top and how they manipulated his wife in order to break up with him. I mean, it's ugly things that they do. The left does ugly things. The entire premises of the international law is that human rights in any country are of concern to all of us. This mindset of the leftist Jew is a globalist mindset. It is part and parcel of those Jews that are involved in the New World Order in which any conservative is against. We're not against the global idea of a messianic period in which there will be peace and prosperity for everyone. No! These Jews are in, in link, are in the same mindset as those of the Economic Forum. As a matter of fact, you have a Jew, a uh, LGBTQ Jew, that sits on his council and is completely contrary to our Torah and wishes to wipe out Torah in the life of the Jew. Jewish organizations are vocal about human rights of abuses in Russia, China, Syria, Sudan, and many other countries. And second, such criticism levied by the Jewish right against the left is hypocritical. No, it's not. You don't like hearing the truth. The ascendance of the Israeli right and the spread of the right-wing ideology in Israel and the expansions of settlements all came about in part as a result of untold millions of dollars that right-wing American Jews have invested in buildings and settlements and pushing the right-wing policy in Israel. Hooray! Finally, someone doing something right! Third, those of us who actually care about safety and security, yes, those of the right, have created a response to the left trying to de destroy and devastate every single part of Israel. But no, they're more worried about the enemies who are trying to kill us and open the borders like they're doing here in the United States to have everyone come in. Do you see the parallels, my friends? What happens in Israel happens around the world. If Israel is doing good, the rest of the world will do good. At the start, every Jewish organization regularly invites Israeli political speakers to speak at their conference and events or meets with Israeli elected officials during the delegation must commit to never inviting. Notice this. They're canceling out who? Ah, the left is good at this. The leftist Jews are good at this. Never inviting Ben Gavir. They want to cancel Ben Gavir. They want him out. But Salel Somrek or others, members of the party, to address the U.S. Jewish audience. So should we basically cancel and block any uh, speakers that are coming from the left side of the Israeli politics? Netanyahu, with his record of incitement and plans to destroy Israeli democracy, should be a persona non grata in Jewish space committed to democracy, justice, and equity. If anyone represented and represents democracy within the context of Israel is Bibi Netanyahu. Give me a break. The Jewish community deserves leadership that dares to speak hard truth. And it's obviously not Rabbi Jill Jacobs, who happens to be the chairman executive officer of Trua and who is a leftist in all of his thinking. The Jewish community deserves leadership that dares to speak hard truth just like Itamar ben Gavir, But they don't want to hear it. Why? Because it imitates the voice of the right. It imitates the voice of Torah value. It, it speaks of the importance that the Jewish role has in Israel and around the world when it stands up for Torah values and Torah ideas, even within its political realm and culture. My friends... They're making Itamar Ben Gavir into a monster that he is not. They're making him into a hate figure so they can be able to isolate him and then kill him as they did and were part of, of the killing of Mayor Kahana, who was a Cohen, who was a very righteous man, who basically spoke up when the injustice was being done against the Israeli community 
and he was killed in the streets of New York, actually in the meeting. Can we forget that? No, his words would come very provocative, no doubt about it. But this is where they crossed the line of freedom of expression to actually violence. My friend, all I've seen is that the left, the democratic left, has been more violent than any other person from the right. And yet they keep on accusing the right of being violent, of being uh, completely a terrorist, domestic terrorist, or terrorist abroad. And it is the left who have been acting and behaving as the actual terrorists. And there's plenty of incidents. They are being the thieves of the elections. They're the ones to be able to create stuffing the ballots. And yes, you can very well be a, um, elect an election denier and still have your opinion expressed. Now, they're going to try to stop that. Our democratic leftist contingency here in America will try to criminalize the act of saying that, yes, you believe the elections were stolen. Their own pol politicians have said that before in the past. There's a difference between saying it and there's a difference between having to accept the results, even the corrupt results, of the elections. So next time you read about Itamar Ben Gavir, it is an incredible movement that will strengthen Israel's party to a more conservative and Torah value existence. So I applaud Mr. Itamar Ben Gavir and encourage uh, Bibi Netanyahu to move forward, making him part of his uh, ministers and to be strengthened and may all of Israel be strengthened and not be weakened by these leftist uh, enemies of all jewelry. All jewelry. Because when they go and, and plot with the enemies of the Jews, they become enemies themselves.